Let's all put our hands together for Mika Jackson. Mika. Hi, I've got great news. I've found the way to make breakfast even better. You see, I love cereal. You've got Fiber Plus, Cinnamon no Crunch, and uh, don't even get me started on the minions. They're my favorite. And I'm not alone. Americans love cereal too. 92% of all households buy it. But there's a problem. As you start to get to the bottom of the box, you start to get tiny pieces of cereal and that annoying dust. And look out for that last bowl. Yuck, it's just awful. So what can you do? <laughs> well, you can throw it away, but that's a waste of money and good cereal. Or you could just ignore it and open a new box, but then you have clutter in the cabinet. You know, if only there were a way to make the last bowl just as good as the first. Well, now there is. I've invented the cereal sifter. The cereal sifter is an airtight container with a special sifter built into the bottom that automatically sifts out crumbs of dust. In a minute, I'm going to give you a live demonstration, but I'd like to start by showing you how it works. Now, the special feature of my cereal sifter is at the bottom opening where my sifter tray is located. Here, let me show you. So if you take the bottom off, you can see the sifter that I've installed. There are three adjustable settings, large for the biggest crumbs, small for dust and small particles, and of course you can always leave it closed for no sifting. Now, I've made my sifter tray removable so you can pour in the cereal from the bottom. Why would you do that? Well, let's open a box of cereal to find out. <laughs> this is a bag of minions. Where are all the crumbs? Right down here at the bottom. So once you pour your cereal in and turn it right side up again, all the good stuff is at the top, and the crumbs stay closer to the bottom. Here, let me show you. Okay, so you pour your cereal in. Place the sifting tray back on. Flip on the bottom. Turn it right side over. You can fill it with shake if you want. And look, the sifting process has already begun. And even as you pour each bowl of cereal, just by simply putting it back and forth, you're automatically sifting out even more crumbs. Woo, look at all that in the bottom already. Check this out. Look at all that. <laughs> that is the stuff that used to ruin your last bowl of cereal. <laughs> And this will work on your favorite cereal, too. I test it on several different brands. Here's some pictures of the results. You can even get a closer look at the cereal. Okay, so now that we know how great the cereal sector works, let's talk about how we're going to sell it. Each year, in the U.S. alone, Americans spend nearly $8 billion on cereal. You know what that means? We're going to sell a lot of cereal sifters. <laughs> I can see it at Target, Walmart, Bed Bath & Beyond. And we can even sell it online at CerealSifter.com. But there's an opportunity that I think is even bigger. Mr. Green, Ms. Holloway, Mr. Arrington, are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> Television. <laughs> I'm thinking, what are you doing Thursday noon at 3? I think you do my show. Are you listening to the team cleaners? That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Are they hiring a new man, Bill? I just wanted a sub for me. Did you get a haircut? The serial sector would sell in 1995, but for the next 30 minutes only, let's offer our TV viewers a special deal, just $14.95. Uh, <laughs> or for all you serial lovers out there, two for $28.95. <laughs> and that brings up a good point. Do you have just one box of cereal at home right now? No, of course not. So if you like mini wheats, your sister likes Cheerios, and your parents like cornflakes, well, that's three cereal sifters sold right there. We'd sell millions, not just in the US, but all around the world. So I hope you can see why the cereal sifter really does make breakfast better. Just think about all the benefits. It saves money because there's no more wasted cereal. That makes mom ha well, dad happy. <laughs> no more happy in boxes cluttering up your cabinet. That makes mom happy. And best of all, it makes the last bowl just as good as the first. And that makes you happy. <laughs> Thank you.
Michelle, you you did a lot of practice on the presentation. Good job, uh, by the way. So I think Bill's not teasing when he's saying, "Come on over to HSN." So um, I'd love to see that. So uh, you can give the leftovers maybe to your younger brother or sister. <laughs> uh, will it work on anything besides cereal in the house? Think about that too. You know, well, like if you wanted to sit down, like. Um, we, for salad, there are these nuts that I put into every salad bowl, and my mom and dad were doing that, and there was all this dust at the bottom there, too, so they're like, oh, the nut sifter. Maybe croutons, or, yeah, you know, maybe just, you know, thinking, I, I don't even know, but it might be a sifter beyond just cereal, I guess is what I was, you know, just that way people could think, and maybe different sized ones, too. People might be thinking that, that they might buy one for other purposes around the house besides cereal. But I, I like it for cereal, too, though. Good job. Phenomenal job. Phenomenal presentation. Your research is great. I love your photographs. They truly show that you've done your research and it shows us an idea of what it does look like, all the crumbs in the bottom. I think the sifter opening at the bottom where you can empty the sifter even before you're done with the cereal is fantastic. And I think the best part of it is the fact that you can sort out the size of the stuff that you want to sift out. That's really ingenious. Good job. Well, I have to tell you, that was the, I, I've been waiting for this all night. That was, so far, the award-winning presentation, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Let's hear it. Okay. So, well, I do think that your marketing idea, because most people have more than one cereal in their home, so it's buy one, but wait, there's more, and buy two, and it's 1995, oh, but wait, there's more, it's free shipping. I think that the American household would love this product. Um, I do think we all, every one of us in this room, have opened a bowl of cereal, I've opened a box of cereal, poured it into a bowl, and when we got to the end, it was powder and dust. I kind of like that part of the cereal. <laughs> all, the, all the sugars at the bottom, but um, but realistically, it's not as good as the first crispy bowl. And I think it's a brilliant invention. It's also something that could be an adapter to a current um, snack lock container. So there's an aftermarket opportunity there to sell the sifter insert for current things that exist. And let me add on, let me piggyback on what you said there, Bill. You know, sometimes the bottom part is the good part when it's all sugar. Why couldn't you top your ice cream with something like that? You don't even have to waste any of it. Excellent. Oh, Jen. That's Just say it. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Are you over? Are you over In fact, there's this one thing called Smart Start, all the good stuff at the bottom. Right. That is really good for yogurt. Right. So it, either way, it's all stored down there in the bottom. So you can just have it. Not throw any of it away. You know, it's strange how you have the judges here. We have three <laughs> TV marketing people and three scientists over here. <laughs> and uh, I got to tell you, I was blown away by your presentation. I'm sure everyone was. Um, I like the product. I, I, I was ready to give you $36. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what I liked about it, too, was not just the sifting part, but I get tired of using those boxes. And my wife, if I don't clip the inside one and leave it open, I'm telling you, I, I don't sleep at the house. <laughs> so I like the fact that you take this box, you put it in there, and that seals it, it stays fresh, exactly. It seals, seals it. And uh, great job, awesome. Thank you. Uh, that was a phenomenal presentation. And I like the idea, I love the marketing. Uh, I love the energy you put into it. Uh, my question is, is a little bit of the, uh, on the fire side. And have you thought of us, uh, where would we make this? Did where you know, would you make it? Yes, yeah, where would we make this? Um, Who did the prototypes of this one? Well, of course, um, the whole thing was built with my dad watching behind me, making sure yeah. I was doing well. Yeah. The drilling. You got it, Kate? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, he was always there behind me, making sure that I uh, did all of it correctly. Like, I had to take two containers and cut them in half so I could put them together and create the top and the bottom. So then, of course, he's always there um, monitoring me to make sure. Sure, that. That's mm -hmm. what's there. So how would you make this? How would you make it? Yeah, if you had to go and, and market and, and make it a product, have you thought that far ahead? Have you seen anybody that has patents or things like that on this? 
when I searched patents for it, there was a lot of industrial stuff for it. So if I was actually to, if I were actually to make this, uh, there would probably be some sort of mold that would actually give you the whole um, shape right. of it. And then it, it, it would all be pretty uh, mold stuff. Most probably how they usually make um, containers that they make today. Uh, except I have this sifter in there that's not that easy, uh, not that hard, I should say, right. to uh, put in there. So it's just a lot of the plastic, which we would be, we would be using. Great presentation. Okay. Nikki, I recognize you. How many times have you been here? Um, I just started last year when my teacher, Ms. Uchardo, she was actually introducing it. She was really, really energetic about this sort of stuff. And it really made science really fun. So I entered this with the binder buddy, and then I made it to the finals. And that was really, really exciting. So I've gotten um, uh, a little bit of experience before this, and I really love science. So it's really been enjoyable for me to actually tie science into all this marketing and uh, really relating it to the real world. So you think you'll be here next year as well? Huh? You think you'll be here next year as well? Oh, he's going to be a millionaire by next year. Stop. This is going to be on air. I'm just thinking, does that make you a serial mentor? Yes. <laughs> The judges have deliberated, and for most of them who are returning, actually all of them are returning, I think we all agree this is probably about the most difficult decision we've ever come before. Um, the, all the inventions here, uh, you all have raised the bar in this competition uh, to a point it just hasn't existed before. So for that, it's just you know, Medals, which I'm going to ask Anna to come up here with. And while we have a first, second, and third place this year, the competition was so close and the innovations were so good that, in good conscience, we had um, actually all 10 of them were excellent, but we had uh, one competitor that we could or could not put into the, the last three, and the engineering and the innovation uh, of that was so good and was uh, argued so well and passionately by so many of these judges that um, the judges have indicated, and, and Dr. Sandberg, uh, they're going to reach basically into their own pocket and make sure that there is acknowledgment of, of what an excellent, excellent innovation this is. And so I would just like to recognize uh, um, what we believe is uh, technological innovation and achievement, uh, almost as a separate second acknowledgement of Jonathan Hall, because his message. <laughs> so with that, and Jonathan, it was a really wonderful so, with that, I am pleased to announce the second runner-up of the USF 2013 Young Innovator Competition. And there should be a young lady named Anna Hopin that needs to come over here with some medals. <laughs>
so you can't leave. <laughs> but please stay around before we announce it so you can get a picture with your judges and uh, um, a picture together before you leave. Because I know that once we get our winners, everybody's scattered. So the winner of the fifth annual, annual USF Young Innovator Competition is the serial shifter.